Hi guys, and welcome back to another episode of Building a Nation with Polonia Vorsheva. Today, we've got Champions League stuff, we've got transfers, we've got a buttload of games off camera, and my goodness, um, our defenders are unbelievable, is all I can really say. Um, I think we found the perfect defensive setup. Our back five of the back four and the keeper, they're just absolutely impenetrable, as you're going to see in a minute. Uh, but first, I don't know where to start. So I'll start with, I got off of the Portugal job. That was kind of interesting. I want the Poland job at some point, but later in the line, late down the line, the same manager's been there for like six years lately. So that doesn't seem like it's something that's ever going to change, or certainly not for the meantime, because Poland are actually doing quite well. And weirdly, we're not sharing a stadium at the moment, and I don't know why. I think it's because we had those other developments from before. So they're building those first, and I think after that, then we're going to move out so they can really upgrade the stadium, uh, and we're going to have to share with Legia. But at the moment, all our fixtures are still let, uh, for the Convict Oscar. So I don't know, it's weird. Yamrog, the reason I'm showing you him, is because he actually got a call up to the Polish national team squad. He didn't get a cap, didn't actually get onto the pitch or anything, but he was included in the uh, the squad for the last round of fixtures. So that was really nice to see, as Vigar was still playing in the under-21s at the moment. But just the fact that Yamrog was actually considered for a Polish cap was really, really cool. Um, now, he would have been on like 20 grand a week nearly had he got that cap. Um, so... Then someone put a bid in and he wanted a new contract. So I took that moment to basically remove that clause from the contract and put him on 13 grand a week. So we've basically saved seven grand a week because it feels like he's very, very close to getting an international cap. So we saved a little bit of money there on old 21-year-old suave Yamboy. When did Real Madrid start playing at the new camp? Yeah, I knew this was going to come up. When I was editing it, I heard myself say that and I thought, right, I'm going to get absolute pelters for that. All the most international caps, but I had a Jamaican regen called Barrington Dixon who's got 128 goals and 150 odd international games. That is ridiculous. That's amazing. And plus, for the first thing, Mike Barrington, what more do you want? Sergio Ramos had 197 caps, but Michael Bradley in the 200... I looked at the picture. I think it was 215 caps Michael Bradley got. And also, thank you for providing evidence. That was insane. Someone said they got a player that had 600 caps, which to me doesn't sound possible because I don't think there'd be that many games. Unless they played till they were like 90. How come a lot of your players go to the second team before coming to you? Basically, because we sign mostly younger players, a lot of them get dumped straight into the uh, under-19s or under-18 squad or sometimes the B team when they join. So as a result, I have to bring them up. That's the reason it will often say down... I can't even, I'm pointing at. Down here, it will say like Polonia 2. That's the reason because I believe the under-19 squad or under-18 squad is also considered part of the B team. So that's why that is. Legia have completely fallen off the wagon. I didn't know a team was full of recovering alcoholics. Well, that would explain a lot about where they went last year now, wouldn't it? After being neck and neck with us, they're then just completely disappearing. FM is just straight up against goalkeeper. I mean, it's disgusting how you'll get a 6.9 or a 7.2 when they're easily the best player in both teams. A can make three key passes. And get, yeah, it is ridiculous. Um, just know, we fight in your corner. When we were down in London... Um, at SI, we talked to the devs about this specific thing. And at the time, it did look better because I, I spent a lot of the afternoon actually looking at this sort of stuff. But I don't know. I think it just needs to be reworked in the way that those ratings are given a little bit because goalkeepers do get horrifically underrated, as you're about to see. So, going to do signings first, then show you off-camera games, then, good God, there's just so much stuff to talk about. Before any of that, Champions League draw. Schalke, Ajax, and PSG. No real massive weak team, but I think Ajax and Schalke, both of those games are winnable potentially, which means we could have a real shot there. It's going to be us three basically battling it out and PSG disappearing, I think. And I'm all right with that. I think it's going to give us hope. And more important than that, Rakov unfortunately were knocked out of the first attempt in the Champions League, uh, beaten like 4-1 on aggregate, I think by Feyenoord. Order. I think it was Feyenoord, PSV. Um, but that pushed them straight into the Europa League group stages, which... Come on this. Lech were already qualified for, but both Legia and Lechia managed to get to the group stages. So we have four teams in the Europa League group stages this year. And that, to me, spells some serious coefficient. They actually got quite easy draws, to be fair, to get there. So that really, really did help us out. And I think that will be a massive boost to our coefficient this season, provided they don't all muck it up. So firstly, Jacob Zim has gone out on loan. There's going to be a lot of loan outs, don't worry. Mateusz Klack has also gone out on loan. Piotr Mikulski has gone out on loan. Vasil El Khatib has gone out on loan to Lechia. Janowski has gone out on loan. Marek Goretzky's gone out on loan. Bjawik has gone out on loan. There's a lot. Edwin Palacios has gone out on loan. And there's a reason for that, which we'll see in a minute. Um, this was a good opportunity to get him some football consistently. Kozawa has gone out on loan. Lots of players have gone to Skra. Iriondo has actually gone to Rakov on loan. I thought I'd give him a bone. Shaplinski has gone out on loan to Skra. Pavlovsky's gone to Lubin. Jan has actually joined Zag, so that's nice to get him out on loan. He's joined there by Duvalier Hiber. Kraviek has also gone out on loan to Motor. Vitarsson has gone out on loan to Katowice. Good, I'm glad I finally got him to a Polish team. And Bujovic has also gone out on loan. That's all the loanies. Now, there's also been some other outs. Kuharski's gone to Wisła for £160,000. Not too bad. I lowered the amount of money they were going to offer us and then just put the 50% next selfie clause in to lower the deal a bit. 
Zakrzewski has gone out uh, completely to Gornik for like uh, quite a bit of money, actually, like half a million pounds. Uh, but they wanted him, and I was prepared to let him go to them. It was actually 825,000 in total. Conifal has gone out alone to, uh, sorry, gone completely permanently to uh, Con to Corona, who are doing really well this season. And I think he's probably had some kind of involvement in that for like 1.2 million pounds in the end. They were prepared to offer big money. I was like, all right. And Elton Lopez has left, uh, left to go to her to Berlin because we didn't need him anymore. Half a million pounds and he's off. The first of our signings that have come in, Diego Silva. Now, this the other one that I thought would fall through, the one that went might go to Porto, did go to Porto. But this guy did join us uh, from O'Higgins for, I think, £2.6 million. He is on 22 grand a week, which is a lot of money, but I felt like he was quality. He's got great passing, great tackling, great vision. There's a lot to like. He's a bit on the short side, but he really does give us some backup quality. Now, we've got Silva, Patino, and Bonavento all in that DM spot. We're really stacked there. So I was pleased to bring him in for £2.6 million. I couldn't really argue. We then actually did add another central midfielder. Uh, I had Militic mainly because he was available for 1.3 or it might have even been 1.1 million pounds. And for that kind of price, I couldn't really turn the deal down. It was one of those ones that I just felt was too good to not have. Uh, so he can now join Jacobo Garcia. And that's the reason I was able to send Palacios out on loan because we have Militic to back him up. And also, I said I was going to try and bring in some uh, youngsters just for the future. This is Marilison, who's come in from uh, Sao Paulo. I think he actually was on loan in Saudi Arabia last year, which is kind of interesting. Um, so yeah, he's come in for, I believe, £1.7 million. Pounds. It was weird um, that they, they had like an asking price, but then they wouldn't let us pay the asking price. They wanted more. Really odd. But there you go. So he's joined us as well. One for the future, £1.7 million pounds into the club. There is a Libyan guy I've also signed. He won't be joining us uh, until next season but i saw the opportunity to sign a libyan player and i just thought that was too good to turn down i didn't really scout him fully but i just thought it'd be fun to bring in him so he's coming from benghazi and it's ahmed mufta so a load more business done i think that's really really helped us some of the outs are going to help other polish sides all is looking well we're playing schalke today it's going to be tough i rested valerie for the last league game oh i'm sure going to show you those as well I rested valerie for the last league game and then he goes and gets injured yesterday brilliant stuff right let's do a very quick rundown of the league stuff too because there's so much to pack in here Fresh off the back of that 1-0 opening day victory, we went out and thumped uh, Wubin on the next match day. Two, uh, a goal for Kevin, two more goals. Oh, sorry, two goals for Herman Carbio and one for Militech on his debut for us. Really strong performance, another clean sheet. Good stuff. Then came the one nils Away at Katowice, a, a Garcia penalty was all it took. We were still pretty decent, but it took that little bit extra to get us over the line. It was a similar story against Zag, although I think we were even better in this one. Patino's long-range strike was all it took in this match to give us a 1-0 victory. We've been 1-0 specialists. Then against Arca, it was a similar story, although we did create a lot more chances in this one. Herman Carpio grabbing his third of the season. The ball was whipped across and he volleyed it and hit the bar and the net did that cool thing where it bounces up in the air. But Freitas again was sensational. Then against Lech again, still very, very good. Victor Hugo this time giving us a 1-0 victory. You'll notice the nils are starting to mount up a little bit. And then it just kept going. A 2-0 victory this time against Swant. Victor Hugo and then Mateus Zvigawa getting his first goal of the season uh, this time. The defenders again putting in shifts. And then with a totally rotated side, away at Viswa Krakow, a 1-0 victory. Everton Escobar getting the winner for us in this game. Um, almost every single player, apart from Franceschi and Freitas, um, was rotated for this one. And we still came up with a victory. You might have noticed something. Yes, we haven't conceded a goal yet this season. So naturally, despite keeping eight clean sheets in eight matches, Franceschi has been rewarded with a 6.91. If you ever needed any examples of why goalkeepers need a little buff to that, then that's your reason. I know he hasn't had that many shots to save, but still, come on. And all that leaves the league looking like this. We're on 24 points, 8 wins out of 8. I, I thought we might be able to get it, but I did worry that once we started having to rest players, things might start to fall off the wagon. But we really do look head and shoulders above this season. But more importantly, it's the defensive side of things for me that's really stepped up. We actually don't look so great going forward at the moment because those players aren't still betting in. Plus, we've not got Rodriguez. Victor Hugo missed quite a few matches at the start as well through injury. Um, it's mental. But what I would also say is that Königsmon of Corona has also kept six clean sheets out of eight and they've only conceded two goals in their first eight games and that's the reason that they're sitting second in the league at the moment some of the players we sold them probably helped out a little bit too um but yeah i think the reason is because our defenders are so solid we've really focused on signing exactly what we need for the type of defending we need to do and it's worked the thoughts i came up with in the analysis video a couple of seasons ago i think we're now starting to really reap the dividends of those ideas really um Freitas has been sensational and also this is the main thing that I'm so pleased about Freitas is in the process of signing a new contract the moment we got out of the transfer window and we'd managed to keep rejecting offers from teams eventually he handed in like six transfer requests but I just kept rejecting them and now he has actually um, agreed to enter contract talks with us not only that Franceschi has signed a new contract and he's happy to stay here as are both of the big Serbs Pandurovic who was the one really angling for a move he's on a new deal and no longer wants to leave and Vinjevic who never really actually wanted to kick up a fuss but he's got a new deal as well so really all is well in that I think there was one more actually 
Oh yeah, Yamrog also got on New Deal too. But the point is, we've managed to keep the, the boys together and get them on New Deals to keep them nice and strong in the team. So that's really, really nice to see. Um, but that defensive line is absolutely rock solid at the moment, and I'm a huge fan of that. Um, Malek's done a good job when he's played as well. Just the little additions we've made have definitely made a huge impact, and Freitas coming in when we've needed him has definitely done a good job for us too. I still haven't been able to find a good third, like fourth choice centre-back though, so those three are going to have the work cut out this season. This is the menu we were actually on. So yeah, um, Paris Saint-Germain and Schalke and Ajax. There's no like stragglers, but I do feel like the second pot team is maybe a little bit weaker. Uh, so that's kind of helpful for us. They're obviously going to be the favourites. So obviously none of these guys can play today. That's fine. I've rested them. So let's switch a roo. Valerie, I'm prepared to start him anyway, despite carrying a slight knock. Kevin, he had a really good game and he's just sort of dwindled since then. So we are going to bring Zvigawa in. Uh, go with the standard front line. I'm going to bring Garcia in here as well. And at the back, we also want to bring Patinho back. I'm going to bring Yamrog back in there. Freitas and Pandurovic. Yep, that's all nice and good. We're actually going to be fresh for a Champions League match for once, and it didn't cost us any points. Slightly limited on our options due to what we could register for this, unfortunately. Campagnaro, Vinjevic, Bonavento, Kevin, Malek, Silva, and Militic on the bench. Really, really nice stuff. So Vigawa does need to step it up a notch this year, though, is what I would say. So far, um, five league appearance, five league starts, just the one goal for us. He did get the goal in the cup final, too, so he definitely needs to pick it up a notch. But hopefully he can do that now. I hope. He needs to. Maybe Schalke, maybe I'm just underestimating Schalke. Maybe they're actually a lot better than I think they are. But I feel like we could have got much better teams um, in terms of their quality in that pot. So I think we've got a good deal when you look at some of the other teams that were in there. Let us have this. Um, it's going to be difficult. I want to see Zvigawa step up a little bit in Europe. The team have been absolutely flawless in the... Like, absolutely faultless in the league. And hopefully that can continue. Carbio has been excellent again. I would really, really love to achieve that, but I don't know if it counts for league games or competitive matches. If it's competitive, I think we'll struggle because that would mean we'd have to keep a clean sheet today against Schalke, which is going to be difficult. Oh my God, Valerie's throw! Oh, what a chance that was. Valerie was nearly in there. Headed away, back to Yamro. Go on, son. Get a good cross in. Oh, it's blocked. Uh-oh. Now we're in trouble. We've got two on... Oh God. We're going to need some top defending here and he's round the side for Kalu and he's missed it. Franceschi didn't even have to make the save. I wouldn't be opposed to something like a nil-nil draw because this is probably one of the key matches for us, really, away at Schalke. Oh, Yammer can find Victor Hugo! Valerie! Oh, my goodness. We've created some good chances today. I think the pressure's starting. Oh, that's really... If we concede a goal for that... Well blocked again. Seriously, our, defend, our defensive back four and the goalkeeper have been unbelievable and they continue to be so tonight as well, which is really impressive against a better opposition. I'd say it's impossible to deny that we are fully in this match and looking very, very good. We're creating opportunities. And then that happens. <laughs> oh, God. Alexander Maximov, with a thunderous effort, concedes the first goal that we've conceded all season. Um, I don't really know what more the defenders can do. They've limited him to... Ah, Franceschi could have done a bit better. It's just a long-range effort. It's taken that to beat us. That's annoying. Avoiding defeat here... Um, in Gelsenkirchen would have been very, very important for our chances of getting through this group. Oh, no. Oh, puts it wide. They've really stepped it up towards the end of this half now. If we concede from this as well, I'd be so annoyed. We had so many options there to put that ball in. Oh, no. And it's headed wide. Oh, dear. This is some really nice football. Right, breakaway. Go on, Carbio. Find Victor Hugo and let's have a bit of a break now. We've got men surging forward. Fresh legs as well. Go on, make that little run to the channel. It's... He's through. Oh, he's missed it. Campagnara with a huge opportunity. Well, this is frustrating. Today, I feel like we've been the better team on the night and we're going to end up losing it, I think. Uh, that's frustrating. Like, a draw when you're the better team is, like, ah, a bit annoying. But to actually come here and lose, given the way we've played, is frustrating. Why is he distributing there? That's better. Victor Hugo again. We're getting the ball out wide and we're getting it there sooner. Carbio. That's it. Campagnaro again. He's going to have to go take people on, maybe. Ball in. Victor Hugo! Yes! There it is! Equaliser. 80 minutes in. Anthony Campagnaro puts that ball across. And I think that's a very, very deserved equaliser. We've created some good chances in today's game. Now that we're spreading the ball wide a bit sooner, and um, we're making the best of this. Campagnaro, this is a really nice ball in, actually. Victor Hugo creates tons of space for himself. Oh, a little scissor kick volley at the back post. Come on, Victor. Lovely old job. Uh-oh, get out to the blocks. Brilliant. Oh, no. Great block again. And that's going to go out for a court. Oh, a goal kick. That should do it, surely. Yes, there we go. We got the one-all draw. I think that's thoroughly deserved. Uh, we played really, really well on the night. And a bit unfortunate to concede the goal that we did, in all honesty. A long-range effort. Um, that's a really good point away from home, though, against the second-best, in theory, team in the group. I think we've got a real shot of getting out of this group again as the, as the runner-up. Come on! So there we have it. Our first, drops point, our first dropped points of the season. And, in fact, the first goal that we've conceded in any competitive fixture this year. Um, and even that was a long-range effort. We've... 
we're doing pretty well. And to get a draw away at Schalke is really, really important. Um, next up, though, we've got Paris Saint-Germain at home. I mean, that's just kind of let's have a crack at them at home, see what we can come up with. You never know. Then we've got Ajax at home, and that's going to be the next episode is those two games. So off camera, we're going to have, we've got Corona, which is the top of the table clash, uh, a cup match in there. We've got Viswa, and then in between there, we're also going to have Lechia and Gornik. It's going to be difficult. I think the league this year should be fairly straightforward, given the gap we've already managed to pull out. But the Champions League, we've been given a real opportunity to get through the group for a second time in a row. And with the way things are going with the Europa League of actually having four teams in there, I think there's a real good chance that this could be a, a very good year for us in terms of coefficient points to make sure because we're actually going to lose an 8.5 coefficient point year and we need to try and get at least that and that's a lot of points to get anyway if you've enjoyed this episode and i hope you bloody have drop a like on the video that'll be spectacular and if you're new to the channel hit that subscribe button that'll be awesome as well and i'll join you guys in the next episode for some huge champions league stuff we've really set ourselves up and i feel like we can go out on attack against schalke and ix and should hopefully come up with results against them i'll see you guys soon thanks so much for watching Bye bye